Many boat building projects start with a dream. Mine was to have a functional, multi-purpose sailing dinghy that can be carried on the roof of my car in order to go on sailing adventures. The boat needed to be simple and easy to sail with as much open space as possible to allow for diving, fishing and cruising. In this video, I'm going to show you and explain how I built my 11 foot sailing dinghy from start to finish. I will also point out some of the mistakes I made and how they can be avoided. Buying proper plans from a designer is the best way to ensure your boat will perform correctly and have nice lines. It will also save you a lot of time and money in the long run. For the amount of work it takes to build a boat, it's really worth taking the time to find a design that you like. Before choosing your plans, it's important to consider what type of construction you want to do. This will depend on the resources and tools you have available. I chose the stitch and glue method because it's one of the easiest methods and allows for a strong and relatively light boat. This method uses plywood panels stitched together, usually with wire, and glued together with epoxy resin. Once I had the plans, I acquired all the tools and materials needed to build the hull. Here is what I ended up using. In order to replicate the plan measurements to scale on plywood, a grid system with reference lines 10 cm apart is used. The plans give you a point on an X and Y axis that can be translated onto the plywood. Once the points are measured, they can be connected together using a flexible ruler to create the proper curve. I made the ruler out of a piece of plywood. This process only has to be done for one side of the hull. Once the panels are drawn, I cut them out using a jigsaw and smoothed out the edges with an orbital sander. Then I duplicated the panels for the other side by tracing them back onto more plywood and cut them out as well. Once all the panels were cut out, I laid the identical panels together and sanded the edges again until they were exactly the same size. Since the plywood sheets are shorter than the length of the boat, each longitudinal panels had to be traced in two parts. I used plywood butt blocks and glued the parts together using epoxy. It's the easiest way to do it, but it's not recommended by experienced boat builders. The reason for that is because it's a little bit weaker and it can create a flat spot in your curve. I bought the epoxy resin on Amazon. It was the best deal I could find and the epoxy is pretty good quality. I put the link in the description if you're interested. For most of the build, I use short wood screws to hold the plywood in place. They can be removed once the epoxy cures. Next, I measured and cut out the stern and four peak bulkheads. All the panels needed to stitch the hull together were ready. I first stitched the side panels together starting at the bow, then the stern corners, and finally the bottom panels. The stitching method consists of drilling small holes in the plywood at about 1 cm from the edges, then passing a wire through both panels and tightening it using pliers. This process was very gratifying as I could see my boat take shape. Once all the panels were stitched and lined up properly, I mixed sawdust and epoxy together to get a peanut butter-like consistency 
then filled in all the seams. Once the epoxy cured, I removed all the wire stitching and sanded all the seams with an orbital sander until everything was smooth. I used fiberglass to reinforce the stern corners and the bow to make sure the seams would not break apart when I flipped the boat over. I made a very basic cradle using scrap wood and flipped it all over. The boat felt small upside down, but once it was right side up, it felt a lot bigger. Once the main shape of the hull was done, I placed a four-peak bulkhead at the bow. This forward peak section will be one of the three watertight compartments. Then I measured, traced and cut out the mid-section bulkheads and also fixed them into place. These bulkheads will be connected to the seats and the daggerboard case will slide in between. Next I measured and cut out the panels that make up the two seats. The two seats will be the other two watertight compartments. Once again, I used small wood screws to hold the panels in place until everything was glued. Once I was happy with the positioning of my panels, I glued them onto the hull using fillet joints with the same sawdust and epoxy mixture I did earlier. These fillet joints are the key to creating a strong plywood boat. They function similarly to welding joints. Until this point, I respected the plans, the watertight compartments, dagger board case position, mass position and structural bulkhead will stay the same as the original plans. These are the important things to respect in order to make sure the boat is safe, strong and will function as intended. The rest of the boat can be customized. I wanted to create a forward deck on my boat in order to have a storage compartment and minimize the water coming into the boat. So I added a light curve on top of the four peak bulkhead in order to add camber to my future deck. I then placed a piece of four millimeter plywood on top of the bow section and traced the shape of the bow onto the plywood. This gave me the exact shape of my deck panel. I made a second identical panel and applied Gorilla Glue between the two. Then I screwed them into place. Once the glue was dry, I had a stiff Ford deck panel with the curve I was looking for. I also made two quarter knees that will be glued at the stern corners to add strength. Next, I cut out and measured all the plywood pieces needed to create a dagger board case. Then started gluing the dagger board case together and also glued my quarter knees with the same batch of epoxy mix. Anytime I had leftover epoxy from a batch, I would apply it to the boat either as fillet joints or as sealing coats, trying my best not to waste any of it before it cured. Next day I continued with the dagger board case by fiberglassing the inside. I then started making the gunwales by splitting a 1x4 plank of pine wood longitudinally. The gunwales are stiffeners that will add a lot of strength and stiffness to the boat. 
and will also act as a protective bumper. I proceeded to gluing them on, starting at the bow working my way back. I used screws to hold them into place as I curved them into shape. I made the mistake not to make the gunwales long enough for the entire length of the boat. Instead, I made them in two parts. This made it hard to maintain a fair curve all the way through. I got lazy and in the end, it was a lot more work to fix. At this point into the build, I was possessed. I dreamed about my boat at night. I was fully invested and dedicated, and I did not feel like it was work. So I finished my daggerboard case, gluing it all together. I made sure the inside of the case was heavy duty, using two layers of fiberglass and a lot of epoxy. The constant sliding up and down of the daggerboard will cause some friction, so it's important that the inside of the case will never wear down and expose the plywood. I then made sure it fit properly and set it into place. Next, I worked on the stern gunwale. I improvised and did not follow the plans to make it. I got to a point where the plans were not really needed anymore. All the important panels were made already, so the rest was mostly customized, including the seat that goes over the daggerboard case. It was time to close the foredeck. Since it's a watertight compartment, it's important to coat the inside with a lot of epoxy before closing. It's a place that is hard to access once it's sealed shut. The watertight compartments below the seats were next. Same as the forepeak. I made sure the inside of the compartments were also fully epoxied before gluing the seat panels on top. I later decided to extend my foredeck on the sides using some customized triangle panels. Then proceeded to glue in my daggerboard case and seat in place. It was time to figure out how I was going to finish my storage compartment. Since none of it was in the plans, it took me a while to figure out an aesthetic and practical way to access the compartment while also using the access as a backrest when closed. Figuring out the dimensions of the panels without plans took some time. I had to cut one out little by little until it fit. Then I duplicated the panel for the other side by tracing out the one I already made. Once I was satisfied with my design, I glued it all in place and made the hatch panel that will open and close the compartment. All the non-moving parts of the hull were finally glued in place. So most parts that go inside the hull are basically all glued. Um, so I've creamed everything with this thick layer of epoxy filler mixed with sawdust. I put it everywhere, every little hole, every little spaces that I need to fill in. And now my plan is to 
is to sand everything super smooth so that I can uh, coat it with epoxy later. So now I'm just gonna start sanding. The sanding part was tough. There was a lot of excess epoxy that needed to be removed. It took me a full day to sand everything smooth. I recommend getting a proper breathing mask and goggles for this part. I would have saved a lot of time if I had been more careful by not letting big unnecessary chunks of epoxy dry inside the boat. Putting the boat on its side will make it easier to reach some corners and will also let the dust come out of the boat as you sand. Once I was satisfied with the sanding, I cleaned off all the dust and applied the first layer of epoxy inside the boat. The goal is to completely seal the boat so that the water will never touch the plywood. Okay, so today is a special day. The top of my deck and inside is got its first coat of epoxy. It's, it's not perfect, obviously there's a bunch of imperfections, but I don't really care. What I care about is that the water doesn't get into, get into the wood. Um, obviously I missed a couple of a little bit here. So I'll have to keep doing more coats later in the future. But at least now I know my wood is not just soaking in the moisture. It's a little more weather sealed and definitely a lot stronger. Less susceptible to splintering or falling apart. For the dagger board and rudder, I followed the plans to get the proper dimensions. Both are made of three layers of plywood, cut and glued together in order to make a thicker, stiffer plank. Once I cut all the panels out, I glued them together and used small wood screws to squish the layers of plywood together until the epoxy was cured. Once the epoxy cured, I removed the screws and was left with two planks ready to be shaped. To shape the dagger board and rudder into foils, I used a grinder, an orbital sander, but I would recommend an electric planer if you have one, it would save you a lot of time. This shaping process takes a long time and needs to be done gradually using the different layers of ply as visual guides to make sure the foils are sanded evenly. Once I finished shaping the dagger board, I did the same process for the rudder. Then I filled in all the screw holes with the same epoxy sawdust mix and applied a first coat of epoxy on each. The next day I smoothed out both foils and started the fiberglassing process. I epoxied two layers of fiberglass on each side of the dagger board and rudder. I then sanded down the excess fiberglass and added multiple coats of epoxy on each side over the next few days. The idea is to fill in all the holes and all the bubbles to make a nice smooth finish. At the same time, I worked on the rudder cheeks that will hold the rudder in place and allow it to pivot up and down. I also used the plants for this and epoxied one layer of fiberglass on each side of the cheeks. Both the dagger board and rudder need to be very strong as they will endure heavy lateral loads and be subject to a lot of abuse. 
They took a lot longer to make than expected, mostly because I had to wait for the epoxy to cure between each coat that I added on. Fiberglassing makes the boat structurally stronger and protects it against abrasion when sliding the boat on sand or rocks for example. It also creates a thicker waterproof layer before the water can reach the plywood. For plywood boats, it's recommended to fiberglass all the inner joints of the boat and the entire outside of the hull. I started by lightly sanding the inner joints of the boat using 60 grit sandpaper so that the fiberglass and epoxy mechanically bond better to the surfaces. Then I made 10 cm wide strips of fiberglass and placed them on top of the joints until I had them all covered. I used a paintbrush and applied my epoxy mix on the fiberglass strips until they became fully saturated and transparent. Once the epoxy started to cure, I flipped the boat over. Before fiberglassing the bottom, I needed to cut out the daggerboard hull. I had previously drilled small holes on the other side of the hull before gluing the daggerboard case in order to know where I needed to cut. Yeah. Next, I added epoxy filler in all the leftover screw holes and joints to make sure no gaps or air pockets could form under the fiberglass layers. I then sanded everything smooth, rounded off the corners, and made sure there was no sharp edges left. I laid out my fiberglass cloth, starting with the side of the hull first. I used paper tape to hold it in place. Then I applied the epoxy. I started with a spatula, but the process was slow and it was difficult to apply the epoxy evenly. So the next batch of epoxy I tried with a roller and it was a lot better. It was faster and easier. It's important not to oversaturate the fiberglass and to try to apply it as evenly as possible. For the bottom of the gunwales, I used a paintbrush to properly soak the epoxy into the corners. The next day I sanded the edges of the fiberglass to make everything smooth again and laid out the fiberglass cloth that covered the bottom portion of the hull. The way I laid out my fiberglass ensured I had two layers covering all the panel joints, further increasing the overall strength of my boat. Skeg helps the boat go straight, especially when rowing. I made mine out of a solid piece of pine plank and made sure it fit properly with the curvature of the hull. Then I taped the edges of the bottom side of the skeg to make a sort of mold and poured a relatively liquid epoxy and sawdust mix into it. Once it was cured, I removed the tape and ended up with a solid protective layer against abrasion. I then put some epoxy filler on the edge of the skeg that goes against the hull, positioned it onto the hull using paper tape to hold it in place, and proceeded to making fillet joints all around the skeg. I then coated the hull using a spatula with the leftover epoxy and worked on the rudder system while the epoxy on the hull cured. Once cured, I sanded the filler joints to make them smooth and laid fiberglass cloth on the skeg, making sure it also covered the hull a few centimeters on each side. Then applied epoxy to the fiberglass, 
I used the leftover epoxy to finish coating the hull and ended up with a slick looking bow. Finally, I could start painting some parts. It's important to lightly sand all the surfaces first to make sure the paint mechanically bonds to the surface properly. I decided to test the paint I bought on the rudder and dagger board first. I used regular exterior animal paint. It bonded really well with the epoxy. Next, I cut out my inspection holes to get access inside my watertight compartments and made sure the plastic hatches fit correctly. I'll glue them on properly once the boat is painted. I bought the plastic hatches on Amazon, the link is in the description. Since my hull was almost done, the next logical step was to create a dolly so that I can easily move my boat around. So I bought two wheelbarrow wheels, found a piece of rebar and started building it. I used a 2x4 and some planking to create the structure. There was no plan for this, I just winged it. It took me about an hour to make it. I glued pieces of foam into the cradle to create the pad necessary to protect the hull. Now my boat was a lot easier to move around. The cradle works well, but it's a little heavy and does not roll very well in soft sand. I then assembled all the parts for the rudder system and tested it out for the first time. It worked perfectly, but I'll get bigger washers to hold it together in the future. I bought the gudgeons and pin tools for the rudder on Amazon. The link is in the description. I added a handle to my dagger board using a piece of 5mm spectra. This also acts as a stopper to prevent the dagger board from going all the way through the casing. I also added a circular piece of stainless to the back of my tiller. This will be used as a guide for the lines that will move the rudder up and down. I measured and cut out the holes for the mast and prepped the deck for fiberglassing by lightly sanding it. I decided to fiberglass the gunwales and quarter knees as well. The extra protection will be useful when loading the boat onto my car. I laid out the fiberglass cloth, then applied the epoxy using a spatula for the deck and a paintbrush for the gunwales. Once the epoxy had cured all the way, I sanded everything down smooth one last time and added the final coat of epoxy. I was happy to finally be done with fiberglass and epoxy because it's a messy, dirty thing to work with. A friend of mine gave me an old jib from a big sailboat. Apart from the hole in the middle, the fabric was strong and in decent condition. The sail foil shape was already there, I just had to cut a section in the middle that would fit on the windsurfing mast, and also be 5 to 6 meters squared, as recommended in the plans. As long as the leading and trailing edge of the sail is not changed, it should be a functional sail. First cut and stitched the top section of the sail and also added a batten sleeve. I used an old windsurfing batten and the tightener that goes with it for the top of the sail and used the reinforced holes that were already in the sail as my attachment points. I then cut the bottom section of the sail and also stitched it up. Once my sail was cut and stitched to the right size, I rigged it on the windsurfing mast on top of my roof where the wind blows to test if it could work. The sail seemed to work, so I added some reinforcements and tested it again in my yard 
on the actual boat. The mast connection to the boat was solid, however the mast was a little too short and I was still missing the boom. I eventually went over all my stitches again using a proper sewing machine and polyester thread to reinforce my stitches. Epoxy is not resistant to UV light, so it's necessary to paint the boat if you don't want the sun to damage it. First, I lightly sanded the surfaces to make sure the paint sticks properly. Then, I taped the gunwales to section off the paint, and painted the inside of the boat using a small roller. I ended up applying two layers of paint. I used exterior furniture paint. The whole process was fast and easy. I kept it simple and made the inside one solid color. It may not look so good, but it allows me to spot any damage or scratches to the boat more easily. I then did the same process to the bottom of the boat. I used white on the bottom and gray on the side. I also painted my new windsurfing mask that will replace the one that was too short. I then added new wider washers to my rudder system to make it even stronger. For the gunwales, I wanted to keep the wood color, so I applied UV resistant varnish on them for protection. I then fiddled with the rudder some more until I was satisfied with the system. It was very basic, one line lifts the rudder, the other one pulls it down. Then I glued the inspection hatches with heavy duty tight bond adhesive. I chose not to use screws to keep the boat light and reduce the amount of holes I make through the plywood. Uh, new windsurfing mast. The other one was a little bit short. So a friend of mine gave me this one. It's, uh, it's longer, but it's also fiberglass. Let's see if it's not too flexible and if it doesn't snap at the base here. quick update on the boat. So I finished painting it. Uh, I'm almost done with the rig. I got the sail done. I got a new mast and I'm going to use the older mast, at least the top part of it, this piece, to make the boom. But it's a little short. The idea is to use this piece of aluminum tubing from a, from a sun umbrella. It's perfectly in there. So now you need to just cut it the right length and make some sort of. So I found a system that does two things in one. Uh, this little line here that I attached to one of the screws sticking out from the other side of the gudgeon. This line, I just bring it over the top here, hook it into, into here. And what it does is that when I lift it, it can't go any higher, so it locks my, my rudder in place. And also, when I turn, it prevents the rudder from touching the sides. So instead of making holes or drilling more screws, I find that this is actually quite a simple system that does three things at once. At this point, I was very close to being done, but I still had to figure out an emergency rowing system and fiddled some more with the rig to make sure the boom fit properly and also finalized a bunch of details, including the sheeting line, the halyard, and the overall functionality of the system. 
the halyard actually goes through the mast. One last dry rigging in the backyard and the boat was finally ready for its first sail. To get the boat on top of my car, I built a very basic roof rack using 2x4s. I tie two ropes from the back roof rack to the two stern corners of the boat. I use a piece of foam to protect my car. Then I go on top of my car and pull the bow line up. The bow lifts up vertically, then the boat pivots on the back roof rack. The big day had arrived. We finally got to see the boat floating. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. The boat sails quite well and it's very easy to use. Although it's a little tight, the boat can carry up to four or five people, but it's ideal for two. I quickly realized the paint was very slippery when wet, so I used cheap yoga mats to cushion the inside, making the boat even more enjoyable to sail. I take it out in all sorts of conditions. Flat water is best, but it can handle the ocean, especially with a good crewmate on board. The boat can also be attached to a kite, turning it into a high-speed machine, but it's easy to lose control. We're still trying to get the hang of it. The boat took me two months to build and cost me about $800 in material. If you actually watched this entire video, then you might actually be crazy enough to build your own boat. I hope this video gave you some inspiration and gave you a sense of what to expect when you start building your own. Thank you for watching and best of luck with your own boats.